You're listening to Jonesy's Jukebox on KLOS. That's the Rolling Stones from an album, Goat Said Soup. That was a track called Winter. We're here with David Arquette and Matthew Cook. David Arquette is, is the producer on this uh, documentary. <laughs> One of them, yeah. Survivor's Guide to Prison, yeah. which I watched at five in the morning this morning. That's a oh, nice thanks, time to man. watch it. In its entirety, I wanted to be... I didn't want to watch it last week and then come in and then forget what I watched. Right, right. So it was a... Uh, it ain't a good time to watch at five in the morning. What What would be the best time to watch the documentary? Jeez, uh, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Midday. Midday. Midday? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, because then you have the rest of the day to recover. Yeah. And you won't have a nightmare. How long did it take to uh, to make? Only five years. That's it? Yeah, I, remember, like, I, I mentioned to you earlier. I remember seeing you were kind of talking about it on Facebook about a year ago, right? Yeah. Well, we were kind of sort of dabbling into the topic. There was this really horrible um, news story that I'd read about a kid named Devin Guilford, a seventeen-year-old kid in um, Michigan who flashed his brights at somebody uh, on the road at night for safety reasons and the thinking that this person would then turn off their brights, but it turned out that it was a cop and the cop pulled him over and escalated the situation to the point of physical violence and ended up shooting this 17 year old kid who'd never been in a fight before seven times and killing him. And uh, I was pretty upset about it and I did a, a little Facebook piece and it, it ended up being seen a couple million times and um, I felt like there was an opportunity to just talk about this issue of criminal justice more and more and more. and you know ultimately kind of a film ended up coming out of that yeah so what i mean you know it's a, it's it's a lot of it's to do with money right like yeah. anything yeah like anything there's always a motive behind putting people in jail or whatever it is yeah at the end of the day it's about dough sure 80 and, billion dollars a year on average, I think, is spent on locking people up. And uh, it's not money well spent. As it turns out, 80% of the people that go to prison, state prison, which is where most people go, they return within five years. So that's an 80% failure rate. It's, um, it's, it's not only a failure in the sense of people go back to prison, they don't get re rehabilitated, but they're ripped away from their families. So what's the effect on their families? And how does that actually help victims of crime? It doesn't. So it's a, it's a disaster kind of in every way that you look at it. And I think it's something that we think of as being as natural as the setting and rising of the sun. You know, you put people in prison when they do something wrong. But in fact, it's not. It's something that we invented. It was our next best idea after chopping off people's hands and heads. And it's, um, it's pretty barbaric. And there's a lot of things that do people a lot more good than prison, both in preventing crime and in helping people who are victims of it. Is this just happening in America, this, 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 this system? No, it's, it's all over the world, but we do it the best or the worst. <laughs> but I mean, like in England, is there like these kind of, uh, not, they're just, what are they, the prisons? They, they're called, uh, they're like an industry. It's not like, a, is it a government run? I mean, I don't know. I'm not, I wouldn't be an expert at all at the prisons in, in England, but I know that in terms of our per capita, proportionally, we, we incarcerate more people than anybody else. Numerically and proportionally, here in the land of the free, we do it the most. And you think, um, I mean, obviously there's some bad apples. Yeah. Not everyone's innocent. No, of course. You know. Definitely not. So on a percentage level, how many people are should be in there and how many shouldn't be in there? Well, like, you know, most things, this isn't really a binary question of, of they should or they shouldn't. I mean, certainly there's probably the Innocence Project, for example, estimates that there are 40,000, there could, could be over 100,000 people who are completely innocent of yeah. what they've been convicted of. But then if you just think about how long people are in prison, you know, you don't need to be in prison for 35, 40 years for selling $5 worth of crack. No, I, I get it. I get it. A lot of it's drug related and I could easily be in prison if I was still doing drugs. Easy. You yeah. Know? But uh, it, it's a funny thing because there was a bit in it about the uh, 
the, the, the guy who's pushing the button, giving the guy the electric shocks. Yeah. Milgram experiment. Oh, man. What's it called? The Milgram experiment. From an um, authority figure yeah. telling someone to do something. Yeah. It's, was it was it sixty percent of people? Most people would go along with what they're being told by yeah, someone in authority, authority yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. It's so sixty-five percent of people would electrocute somebody to death if instructed to do so by an authority figure. Meaning, like someone, what you call an authority figure? Like someone who's wearing a nice outfit with a badge on it or a special hat. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Man, I don't know. I don't either. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, either. I don't know because it's just like it's that's one issue in the world to me that's a major problem. Yeah. There's so yeah. many more problems. Yeah. That just seems to be getting worse. Well, it does. And what's so p- pathetic about this particular problem is that we do know the solution um, and solutions. They're right there for us. It's just as you said at the top. There's a lot of money um, in keeping things the way they are now what what let's explain i think you do explain in the documentary survivor's guide to prison available on itunes yeah (laughs) yeah that's it that's what it's called survivor's guide to prison now what let's say okay they make they're building all these kind of prisons all over the place in the middle of nowhere they have to have guests right otherwise it ain't making no money right each inmate they have to fork out a certain amount of money to pay for him in there right yeah they don't care about rehabilitation like you said it's about getting punters in there you know yeah right <laughs> yeah uh, uh, yeah it, a lot of it is about filling the jails like a per capita like giving tickets you, a, a cop has to give certain amount of tickets otherwise he's going to get an earful yeah there's so, this crazy thing he examines is the fact that it's more of a bail system that we have a plea bargain system than a actual court system right you know so you explained it so well well they trump up the charges so something where they they plead guilty to get a, a, a lesser yeah sentence but but, but when they're not guilty yeah and originally you're maybe looking at something that you might spend a month in jail right but they trump up the charges so much that you're looking at 15 years yeah 15 years for getting in a bar fight like because yeah they want them in the jail yeah because there's when, money and they want to win on the on their yeah. you know record yeah. so it, so it turns out that almost 100 percent, it's like 97 percent of all the cases that go to trial are concluded with a plea bargain so we don't have a trial system in the yeah. u.s anymore we have a plea bargain system and then you've got good citizens like myself very good citizens and other people who are like oh it's okay leave them in there we you don't want i don't i don't want them you know and that's and that's the that's the uh that's the the thing that just keeps it going because people would rather these so-called criminals in the jails uh, r- rather than them on the outside dealing with it it's it's pretty black and white yeah we've been kind of like made to think prisoners and jails criminals give them numbers kind of like dehumanizes them yeah i mean 2.7 million children have a parent in jail yeah. in america and 80 f- percent of the women that are in prison are mothers so it's like something that's also breaking up the family dynamic and we're destroying communities without having any kind of parental structure you know a lot of i mean how many people in there are truly like violent criminals that you know like what you call violent to this like rapist murderers i mean bank robbers that's violent well like in the film bank, bank, absolutely bank robbery is not always violent not, not if they're not in there with guns holding it up with guns well if they like drill underneath the bank <laughs> you know, when, when everybody's you, know, when you mean like sleep. sexy beast in the yeah. movie it's yeah. such a great great movie it's, uh, it's the best gangster oh, movie it's the yeah. best you know movie. why it's good why it ain't oh what's that real what is getting in no. it's like normal talking yeah. Yeah. you know like <laughs> you know like the other movies um snatch and uh yeah, long yeah, stop yeah, oh, like, oh, oh, yeah who talks like that <laughs> i don't know but you, i like the way you do it <laughs> yeah yeah you do it by the best but sexy beast man that's that's great with the water oh, it's so good with ben kingsley just trying to convince ray winston to do it 
Yeah. Yes, you will. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, 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 yes, yes, yes. <laughs> anyway, where, where was we? It's all right. we're, we're, we're the very serious topic of um, what David was just saying was the the amount of, of women that are in prison who are mothers. And so, you know, it's something like 80%. So essentially we're taking a whole group of people who've undergone trauma of some severe kind and have serious res responsibilities. And instead of attempting to do quote unquote justice, which would be to help again, help the victims of crime, help those who have been traumatized to overcome, we're just re-traumatizing them by bringing them back into prison. And what a lot of people don't know is that the, the situation with women in prison in the United States is astounding. One third of all the women who are in prison in the world, a third are here in the United States. Mm. And we're just masters of this horrific thing. Gotta fill them beds, baby. That's right. Let's play some rock and roll. This, <laughs> yeah. this is a th Thin Lizzy. This is a track called Jailbreak. We're here with David Arquette and Matthew Cook. Down the West. That was the New York Dolls. Bad Girl from their first album. Thin Lizzy, Jailbreak. Here with my guests David Arquette and Matthew Cook with their documentary Survivor's Guide to prison available right now on iTunes, Amazon, Apple TV, Fandango, digitally like VOD. You can find it anywhere. Not sure about Fandango. I think I'm pretty sure it's what on the hell is Fandango. Really? Guys, it's on Fandango. It is. It was on the list. I thought you. Oh, good. You could like order it on DirecTV or whatever. Yeah, but iTunes. I mean, that's easy. What the hell is Fandango? <laughs> that's how you find out about the movies. You like fire up Fandango on your phone. Right. Not me, but you. You you do that. <laughs> I didn't know you could buy movies though. <laughs> I mean, you can download them. Oh. iTunes. No, no Netflix. Netflix, yeah, in July. Yeah, you don't want to wait until July. I know it, it always goes to Netflix at the end, right? Yeah, it just slides through everything. I've bought, I've like bought stuff off iTunes, and then two weeks later, it was on Netflix for nothing. <laughs> yeah, don't don't mention that. <laughs> but uh, only some rare mute uh, movies, not not. Yeah. You yeah. won't move. No, no. And that's way, way, way in the future in July. You could get arrested before that, <laughs> and then you wouldn't have seen the film, and you wouldn't know what to do. Can you watch documentaries in, in jail? Not this one. They ain't going to want to show this one in jail. No. I think they have to be cleared. They get computers, though, don't they, in jail? Yeah. yeah. Statistics have shown that by having a television in, in jail, people tend to be less uh, troublemaking. Yeah. There were some scenes with the two dudes, the white dude and the black dude, who got wrongly put in there. Man. Yeah. Oh, kill me. Yeah. Kill me. So you think that that happens on a daily basis, that people get arrested because bad cops, they want to convict someone. They don't care about who really did it. Do you think there's a lot of bad cops? Yeah, and I don't think there's. they're just bad because they're intentionally bad and they're thinking... I hate this guy. I want to set him up. It's I not mean, personal. I think sometimes it is, but I think a lot of times it's just people don't care and they get the wrong person and 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 it's it can be a really dehumanizing job, you know, being a, a police officer and having to face all the stuff that they throw them into. Yeah. And I think there are a lot of great, of course there are tons of great great police officers. I know some great cops. Me too. Yeah, me too. That I would call in a heartbeat if something went wrong personally. Yeah. But, you know, at the same time we're giving them an enormous job I and mean, we put in their hands everything everyone who falls through the cracks schizophrenia bipolar mental health issues addiction domestic issues uh, all kinds of social ills we leave that to cops essentially to solve because we've closed down so many of the other programs that would have helped people you know as you saw in the film you know most people who have a mental health issue they end up in prison and that's not going to help them well there's a lot more people in the world than there used to be as well think that's the problem well overload i mean overload just too know. many people i think so i mean i don't i don't know what the solution is you know do, more, more people to handle those people or 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 do what they do in china you only allow one kid that's a nice policy <laughs> <laughs> robots we need more robots i don't know i don't know what would we do with those robots um, they just do all the work and then everyone could just chill. That's such a good idea. We're headed there. Just create everyone just like like uh, just public art classes. Yeah. 
fun stuff. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Robots. That's the answer. It's the, the Robo cops. No. Sex bots. <laughs> Russian bots. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. Those what does guys. bot mean? Is that robot? Short yeah, for yeah. robot? Yeah. yeah. Bot. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I hear them prisons over there are a bit rough. I bet. In, in Russia and all them... Uh, I thought you were talking about the robot prisons. <laughs> uh, they're the worst of all. Oh, robot prison. Wait, what's a robot That's an amazing prison? idea. I don't know, but like if the robots do something wrong... There's, a, gotta... uh, there's a movie there. Yep. <laughs> I see a movie. <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> I like it. I like it a lot. <laughs> Let's start writing it. We're going to visit the Duke. We're here with David Arquette and Matthew Cook. And their movie is called Survivor's Guide to prison there's a lot of good people in it too Danny Trejo he's a producer huh? is he yeah really good really Great good guy. stuff I enjoyed it other, other than couldn't sleep afterwards well Sorry. you watched it first thing in the well, morning so you shouldn't be going back to sleep <laughs> yeah but you think you think oh man this could literally happen to anybody yeah that's yeah. horrifying at the yes. wrong time wrong place boom yeah. yeah be really really nice and do everything right Oh man, I I would I think I'd die if I uh, I think I'd top myself if I thought someone was going to give me like ten years in one of these. A lot of people do these cra crazy places. Mm -hmm. oh, Let's visit the listening dude. to Jonesy's jukebox and Carlo S. That was the Doors. People are strange when you're a stranger, and we had the Faces, Ballstool Boys. That was the name of that track. David Bowie. Boys keep swinging. Beautiful. The New York Dolls. Bad girl. I've already said that one, and I. Oh well. I can always say it again. We got David Arquette and Matthew Cook, filmmakers, producers. <laughs> Survivor's Guide to Prison is the documentary that uh, just came out, and you can get it on. Uh, Fandango. Fandingo. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, what a word. Couldn't they come up with something better than that? Fandango. You can get it on iTunes as well if you don't like that word. Uh, yeah, and then you can wait for a couple of weeks and get it for free on Netflix. No, it's going to be, it's so many months away. <laughs> <laughs> it's months you away, Chelsea. You <laughs> You're going to get a lot of people in trouble. I'm sorry. Will I go to jail? Yeah, and they won't know how to deal with it. <laughs> um,. Are there some prisons worse than others? Yeah, I'm sure. What about the old school ones, like old brick prisons? Yeah. I mean, I don't know if it's the, really the construction <laughs> <laughs> that makes it better or worse. It's the programs. I mean, there used to be... San Quentin has incredible programs. There's one called the Prison University Project, where uh, people can get a higher education and get prepped for a higher education. And that's really what people need um, in order to prevent them from turning to a life of crime is a really good education and really good opportunities for jobs. And Jody Lewin, who heads up the Prison University Project at San Quentin, is just incredible. And uh, people turn their lives around and they don't go back to prison when they go through that. Program. Yeah, zero recidivism rate if they get a master's degree in prison. Yeah, how comes they're doing that and everyone else ain't? Well, how I mean, comes they get away with doing that, I should say? What do you mean? Well, that different concept. Oh, because there was volunteers willing to do it. I mean, they didn't get funding. Jody and her staff just, they wanted to do it. They cared. And they, they saw an opportunity in San Quentin Prison, invited them in and support those programs. I think the proximity to San Francisco in that area helps San Quentin. So they get a lot of volunteers coming in and doing all sorts of programs. I, I taught acting class there two days for two days. It was pretty intense. With a bunch of inmates? Yeah. Yeah. It was, it was an eye-opening experience. But a lot of people think, like, since we're doing this, that we're, we, we're anti-cop or something like that. And it's the furthest from the truth. We totally respect law enforcement. I think, I think the, uh, the, the gripe is, is uh, that there's a lot of criminals and yeah. you're, you're basically saying none of them are bad. No, of course not. What we're saying is there's a better way to turn them from criminals to not criminals. And there's a better way to help victims of crime. Um, heal and if they can reconcile. I mean, if we're doing something that has an 80% failure rate, um, we should turn that around. I mean, it's just insane to say not. Yeah. Well, listen, man. 
men. Yes. <laughs> thanks for coming by. Hey, thanks for having us. Our pleasure. That was uh, that was insightful, and I love the documentary. It's definitely worth watching. Just don't watch it at five in the morning. <laughs> you, you can watch it at you know six in the morning. It's not bad. Seven. Definitely don't do any meth and watch it. <laughs> no. I wouldn't uh, recommend doing that. Don't do meth at all. At all, That's really. the worst. I'm, I'm kidding. just going to go I'm out kidding. on a limb. It's a oh. joke. <laughs> don't ever. I know. Of course, it's a joke. <laughs> I'm paranoid enough, man. Yeah. No kidding. <laughs> do you think that most people who watch it think, oh, do you think that's the message? Oh, that could happen to me. When, when they, uh, That's what I got from it yeah, after watching it. Definitely. It can happen to anybody. I mean, that's why we made it there, but for the grace of God, go I. But I mean, the percentages of all the people in America that that could happen to you is high. Yeah. With yeah. all the amount, the, how many people in America? 350 million roughly. Yeah. Last time I counted. Yeah. Interesting. So, so yeah, there's over 2 million people in prison. There's around 8 million, I think, under correctional supervision. It's out. It's in, It's insane the amount of people that we lock up for all kinds of things and for way too long. And there are programs, restorative justice programs and uh, community uh, programs, educational programs that all prove to keep people from going into crime, helping people get uh, help with their addiction and so forth. And putting them into prison is not the answer to all these things. Mm. And that's the message of the film. Okay. Again, thanks for coming by. Hey, thanks for having us. Good luck. Thanks, John. I'm going to leave you with Roxy Music, the bogus man. And uh, we'll be back on the box tomorrow at 12 bells. See you later.